In this Blender video, I'm going to demonstrate how to add materials and textures to this 3D model of a hammer to achieve this result. In a previous video, I demonstrated how to make the 3D model of the hammer. In that video, I also demonstrated some Blender basics, so if you're brand new to Blender, then you may want to watch that video first. You can find a link to it in the video description. The Blender version that I'm using is 2.8 beta. Since this is a beta version of Blender, you should be aware that some of the things that I'll be showing might change. Also, version 2.8 is a major update to Blender, so if you're using an earlier version, then many of the things I'll be showing will be different. This 3D model is made up of two objects, the head of the hammer and the handle. We'll start with the handle first and add a wood material to it. So verify that object mode is selected. Then press Z and select Look Dev. This is an easy way to get an idea of what the rendered hammer will look like before any lighting is set up. Next, click the handle to select it. Then switch to the Material panel and click the New button. The principled shader should be selected by default. For the base color, instead of selecting a solid color, we're going to use an image. So click this small button next to the base color and select Image Texture. Then click the Open button and select an image. I'm going to use this image of a piece of wood. You can find a link to it in the video description. This image is named woodtexture.jpg. Sometimes the image doesn't update properly when you make a change. If this happens, then just rotate the view a little and it will update. Blender has multiple workspaces available that help with certain tasks. We're going to change the position of the wood image on the handle, so switch to the UV editing workspace. You'll notice that for this workspace, we're in edit mode and solid view. So press Z and select Look Dev so that we can see the wood image on the handle. At the top of the UV Editor window, select the wood image from the drop-down menu to display it. Then use the scroll wheel to zoom. Next, move the cursor into the 3D viewport and press A to select all. Now you can see how the mesh of the handle is unwrapped on top of the wood image. We're going to put this area of the image on the handle. We'll do this by scaling and moving the unwrapped mesh. To do that, select part of the mesh. Then press Ctrl L, which will select all of the linked vertices. Now scale it on the x-axis by pressing S, then X. Then scale it on the y-axis by pressing S, then Y. Now press G to move and drag it over here. I'll switch to the Layout workspace so that we can see how this looks. Now let's add some texture to it. To do that, switch to the Shading workspace. This is the node for the principled shader, and this is the node for the wood image that we added. To give the handle some texture, we're going to use a displacement node. To do that, press Shift A and select Vector. Here you'll find a displacement node and a vector displacement node. Select the displacement node. Then connect the output of the displacement node to the displacement input of this node. Now connect the color output of the image node to the height input of the displacement node. The handle now has texture, but it's too much, so reduce the displacement scale value to 0.1. This makes it look more natural. Now reduce the principled shader roughness value to 0.3 to make the handle glossier. Now I'll switch to the layout workspace so that we can see the whole handle. There's just one more area of the handle that we need to work on. You'll notice that part of the texture from the bottom of the handle extends up into the bevel area. To fix this, we can add a loop cut, so tab into edit mode. Then press Ctrl R to add a loop cut and left click. Then drag it down near to the bottom and left click again. Now tab back into object mode. This looks better. Now we're finished with the handle. This is a good time to save what I have so far. 
Next, we're going to work on the head of the hammer, which will be more complex. This is because some of it will look like smooth metal, and some of it will look like rough painted metal. So switch to the UV editing workspace. Then tab into object mode and left click the head of the hammer to select it. Now switch to the material panel. This object was made from the default cube so it already has the principled shader added for the material. For the base color, we're going to use an image again. So click this small button next to the base color and select Image Texture. Then click the Open button and select an image. I'm going to use this image of a concrete floor. It may seem strange to use an image of concrete, but when we change the principled shader to a metallic material, it will look good. You can find a link to this image in the video description. This image is named concretefloor.jpg. Now set the metallic value to 1. Then set the roughness value to 0.2. If we look at the side of the hammer up close, you can see a seam on the surface. And there are streaks in this area. This is because of the way the mesh is unwrapped. To see how it was unwrapped, select the concrete image from the drop-down menu to display it. Then use the scroll wheel to zoom. Next, move the cursor into the 3D viewport, tab into edit mode, and then press A to select all. Now you can see how the mesh is unwrapped on top of the concrete image. We're going to unwrap this again using a different method, so position the view to roughly this position. Then press U to unwrap. These are different methods that can be used. Select Project from View Bounds. You can see that it's unwrapped based on the view in the 3D viewport. If I tab into object mode, you can see that it now looks much better in this area. Now switch to the Shading workspace, then tab into Edit Mode. Over here, switch to the Material panel. The head of the hammer is going to use two different materials. Name this material Smooth. Now click this plus button to add a new material, and then click the New button. Name this second material Rough. We'll keep the default principled shader. Now press A to make sure that everything is selected. Then click the Assign button. This will assign the rough material to the whole head of the hammer. So now, just temporarily, the smooth material is not being used at all. Now I'll tab into Object Mode so that we can see the material better. Next, click this small button next to the base color and select Image Texture. We're going to use the concrete image again. You can either select it from this drop-down menu or from the drop-down menu in the Image node. Now set the Principled Shader Roughness value to 0.2. Now let's add some texture to it. So press Shift-A and select Vector and then Displacement. Then connect the output of the Displacement node to the Displacement input of this node. The Image node is currently connected to the base color. Remove it from the base color and connect it to the height input of the displacement node. This will allow us to use the texture from the concrete image, but not its color. For the base color, set it to black. Currently, there is too much displacement, so reduce the scale to 0.1. Now this looks like a rough painted metal. Next, we're going to select some specific areas and assign the smooth material to them. So tab into Edit Mode. Then switch to Face Select Mode and select this face. Now press Ctrl along with the plus key on the number pad to add more faces to the selection. If you don't have a number pad, then from the Select menu go to Select More Less and click on More. If you do have a number pad, then press Ctrl along with the plus key on the number pad five more times. This is what the selection should look like. Now select the Smooth Material and click the Assign button. This will only assign the smooth material to the selected faces. Now let's do the other side, so select this center face. 
Then press Ctrl along with the plus key on the number pad four times. The selection should look like this. Next, select the Smooth Material and click the Assign button. We have two more areas to do, so select this center face. Then press Ctrl along with the plus key on the number pad two times. Then select the Smooth Material and click the Assign button. Then on the other side, select this center face. Then press Ctrl along with the plus key on the number pad two times. Then select the Smooth Material and click the Assign button. Now I'll tab into object mode so that we can see the materials better. Now we're going to make a small change to the smooth material. So make sure that the smooth material is selected. We're going to mix in a solid color with the image to lighten up the dark spots. So press Shift A and select Color and then Mix RGB. Drop it on the connection going into the principled shader. We're going to keep this default gray color. The factor value lets us control how much of the image to use and how much of this solid color to use. If I set it to the maximum value, then only the solid color will be used. If I set it to the minimum value, then only the image will be used. I'm going to set this value to 0.3. The hammer is finished now. I'm going to save what I have so far. Next, let's position the hammer on a floor, set up some lighting, and render the final image. So switch to the layout workspace. Then press 1 on the number pad for front view. Now hold down the shift key and left click the handle to add it to the selection. Then press R to rotate and rotate it until it's about level. Then pan the view to the center and zoom in closer. Then press R to rotate again and rotate it until this spot and the end of the hammer are even. Now press Ctrl and 3 on the number pad for left side view. Then press R to rotate and rotate until this spot and this spot are even. Now press 1 on the number pad for front view again. Then press R to rotate one more time and rotate it until this spot and the end of the hammer are even. Now we'll set up the lighting. We're going to be using the Cycles Render Engine for the final render, so select it by switching to the Render panel and then select Cycles. Selecting Cycles now will ensure that the lighting is set up for this render engine. Now select the light source. I'm going to be giving you some specific locations and intensities for the light sources. I'm not being specific because these are necessarily the best settings, I'm only being specific so that you can follow along and get the same results that I get. So press G to move and drag it up until it's 12 grid divisions above the bottom of the hammer. Then switch to the object data panel. Verify that the point lamp is selected and set the size to 3. Then click the Use Nodes button and set the strength to 5000. Now press 7 on the number pad for top view. Then press G to move and drag it until it's two grid divisions past the end of the handle on the red center line. Then duplicate the lamp by pressing Shift D and move it to the green center line, nine grid divisions below the red center line. Then press Shift D again to duplicate and move it until it's nine grid divisions above the red center line and five grid divisions to the left of the green center line. Now change the strength of this lamp to 2000. Now let's add a floor below the hammer. So press 1 on the number pad for front view. Then press Shift A and add a mesh plane. It's hard to see, but it's located inside the head of the hammer. Now scale it up in size by pressing S, then 100, then Enter. Then press G to move and drag it down to the bottom of the hammer. To set the material for it, switch to the Material panel and click the New button. We'll keep all of the default settings. Now press Z and select Rendered so that we can see what it will look like with the Cycles Render Engine. Now we're going to add an image to the background to use as an additional light source. This will help to make the lighting look better 
and it will also give the head of the hammer something more interesting to reflect. To do that, switch to the World panel. Then click the small button next to Color and select Environment Texture. Then click the Open button and select an image. I'm going to use this image. It's common to use a 360 degree image for an environment texture, but since I'm only using it for lighting and it will not be visible in the final render, an image like this will work just fine. You can find a link to it in the video description. This image is named outdoors.jpg. We're done with the rendered view for now, so press Z and select Look Dev. Next we'll set up the camera view, so press 0 on the number pad for camera view. This is the view looking through the camera. I'll zoom in a little. Now we're going to lock the camera to the view. To do that, press N to open the Properties panel and put a check mark next to Lock Camera to View. Then press N again to close the Properties panel. Now we can zoom, pan, and rotate while looking through the camera. Now I'll set up the view that I'd like to use. Now press Z and select Rendered so that we can see what it will look like with the Cycles Render Engine. Everything looks good so we're ready to set this up for the final render. So switch to the Output panel. This is where you can set the resolution of the rendered image and the file format. I'm going to keep all of the default values. Now switch to the Render panel. The sampling section is where you set the number of render samples. The larger this value is, the better the final image will look, but the longer it will take to render. I'm going to keep the default value of 128. Now I'm going to save the project. It's a good idea to do this before rendering in case something goes wrong during the rendering process. Now we'll render the image, so from the Render menu select Render Image. This is going to take a couple of minutes to render, so I'll pause the video until it's done. Rendering is finished and this is the final image. To save the image, go to the Image menu and select Save As. I'm going to name this image Hammer.png. Well that concludes this video. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe and leave a comment.